much. I've got a shirt. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to day five of the Open Education Global 2021 online conference. It's been a fantastic week. And I'm Paul Stacey, Executive Director of Open Education Global. And just want to thank everyone that has participated in this conference for helping make it fantastic. And we have a number of people with us today who have been integral to the entire event. And we thought we would um, share some of the insights and observations that we've had over this past week about what's taken place during this conference. Talk about some of the bridging activities that will um, move forward into the next year conference in, uh, in Nantes, France. And conclude actually with, uh, with our hosts, Colin and Melanie, who are here with us with a little description of what will take place in Nantes. Um, but why don't I, I'm kind of going to act as chair. I'll turn now the floor over to Colin and Igor to share with you some of um, their experiences and takeaways from this week. Okay. <laughs> Let me do, so I've got a microphone. So, so hello, everybody. Um, some of you I have seen in uh, occasional places, left, right and center. Actually, I did spend a lot of time on the French and Spanish rooms. And uh, so I might have missed uh, some of the people in the English room. So let's tell you a bit more about that in a minute. So first of all, yes, so thank you to a number of people. So thank you for people in Nantes first who have done a huge job towards organizing this. I'm really thinking in terms of Melanie, who's going to uh, be speaking a bit later. I mean, she's been extremely active in, in helping us organize this. Uh, also, would like to excuse Madame Karine Bernot, the president of the university. So, although this is a very important event for us, I mean, the um, the things are moving very fast in Nantes because we are trying to sort of promote so hard open education that we are getting enormous amount of uh, people from the ministry asking us to to do things about it. So, so she was very busy. Um, I really hope that when we do have the the meeting in Nantes in uh, in a few months' time, she will be with us and be able to tell us why it is so important for our unit question. So, thank you also for UNESCO for the patronage. So, uh, this was non-trivial. Uh, it made it a little bit more complicated to organize in a certain number of ways because it was a huge honor to actually have the, the flag of the UNESCO with us during the whole conference. It's a huge responsibility too because it's not just like having the logo of just any old um, company or organization. There's a large responsibility with it. I hope we've lived up to it and they have lived up also to our expectancies and uh, Thank you specifically for Zeneb Varoglu from the UNESCO, who put up this webinar we had on day one, on Monday. You may have been there, and uh, we had this simultaneous translation in uh, three or four languages, which made it very strange to follow and move from one language to another. It was the first example of uh, multilingualism, where we were really switching from one language to another. That was great. Also, members, specific members of the advisory board, of what is called the dynamic coalition with which we hope to be able to work in the next few months uh, were with us during the whole conference. So thank you for their um, involvement in a number of sessions. Um, the two program chairs, Wayne Holmes and Davor Orley, is a wonderful program. So I think, uh, well, thanks to them because if we all enjoyed ourselves, all found that they were really exciting papers, it is because they sent out a huge amount of um, of big um, mails all over the place to actually make sure everybody was in the right place in the right time. So that was great. Uh, remember also that not only there were the sessions and the webinars, but there were also the interactive activities, plus all the pre-recorded um, uh, talks. So that was important also. Other people who contributed extremely hard to the conference, the session chairs who were all given instructions. And I was amazed that they actually understood what they had to do because I, I got lost, even if I'm part of those who tried to actually write out bits of what they were supposed to do. The, the rapporteurs also have started their work. Uh, we will be talking about them later. Um, they are of uh, very, very big importance for the future. It's uh, their role to make sure that all these uh, um, important findings that have been identified during these five days actually get reported and uh, are the starting point for the next conference. So thanks to them. Okay, 
So that's my thank yous. And perhaps just a couple of reflections about, you know, what could be the strong points. I mean, it's very unfair because I, I've got a very biased view. I mean, I, I certainly had some strong views before the conference and they're even stronger after the conference. And then I only saw part of the talks. So perhaps I'm going to have missed something really essential. But that's where we're a team. So all these things will come in. Anyhow, the first and most important um, thing to say, in my view, is that multilingualism works. It was fascinating to go to the French sessions, to the English sessions, oh, sorry, the Spanish sessions, to also speak to the person organizing the Arabic, uh, the session in Arabic. Uh, and I'm sure that the same things were said in the Chinese session. People all started their talks by saying, wow, going to an international conference and being able to speak my own language, what a pleasure. So that's the first thing. It was the pleasure of the speakers to be able to express themselves in their own language. I think this was something important. Second important thing was that people talked about the same things, but in a very different way. So I'm lucky enough to actually get along with them some of those languages. It was fascinating to see that basically we were having very different conferences. So the Spanish had a very strange point of view about certain topics. The French would be talking about the same topics, but the whole culture the whole history of the countries would reflect how they would be doing this. Um, and I'm sure the same thing was happening also in the English speaking um, uh, part of the conference. We'll have to reflect upon this. I mean, this is going to take time for us to digest. Because from one, on one hand, you might think this is disappointing because we should have all these people together. But if putting everybody together just means that we get the wrong type of globalization, the one in which everybody fame has the same standard way of thinking and speaking, that's not what we want at all. So somehow we want to keep having this huge variety that has exploded during this conference, keep having it, and yet it still has to sort of get into a melting point somehow. It is going to be our job to do this. Uh, we're open for uh, to suggestions and ideas, but it is a very important question. Just very rapidly, a couple of other issues I saw, librarians are becoming the stars. It was. Uh, clear in, um, in the Frank, uh, Francophone conferences, but I also saw to a number of librarians in the, in, them, in the other communities. It doesn't mean that there wasn't the case already. I just think it is much more the case in this edition of Open Education Global. Um, another issue could be the issue of quality. Quality as being something where people have now not only decided to actually do open education or create open educational resources, but they're all in all countries finding it essential that these are of quality. I'm not going to discuss quality because that is one of those issues which uh, in which the difference between the cultures and the languages is, is really, really strong. But I'm just going to say that I think it's a sign of maturity of the field. It's not about just creating them. It's now how to make sure that they actually work and get distributed. Ah, we need them to be of quality. And then we start discussing what this is. Anyhow, I'm going to be told off if I go on for any longer, and I will pass on to Igor. Thank you, Colin. I thank you for sticking to the time, more or less. Um, okay, so uh, if you have not really been involved in the organization of conferences and international conferences in particular, you might not be aware that this is actually an intensive process. And so likewise, the planning of the Open Education Global Conference, both online and the in-person Congress in Nam, has been a significant undertaking. For nearly a year now, we have been meeting with our co-hosts on a weekly basis. So from my side, I would specifically like to acknowledge the enormous effort that the team at Open Education Global has been putting into the planning and the execution of the conference. And this includes the following individuals, Mario Badia from Costa Rica, Marcela Morales from Mexico, Lisiata Unadeli and Karen Huggins based in, United, in the United States, Ayla Hedolflat from South Africa, Hedolflat from South Africa, sorry Ayla, Jan Gondol from Slovakia, Alan Levin from, uh, from Canada, and of course Paul Stacey, our executive director also from Canada. Well done team, stellar work. Furthermore, I would also like to thank uh, the OEG Board of Directors, as well as the President of the Board, Lina Patterson, for their contribution to the conference and active engagement throughout the week. A special thank you also goes to our sponsors and partners.
for conference uh, partners, this includes Hypothesis and Pressbooks. And for the sponsors, this includes our silver sponsors, the Michelson 20 Million Minds Foundation and Libre Texts, the gold sponsors, Achieving the Dream, and the platinum sponsors. The platinum sponsors are those who are sponsoring both the online conference and also the in-person congress. And this includes l'Université Numérique, and we have Jacques here from l'Université Numérique, and Frontiers for Young Mind. Thank you both, and thank you all for your support. And then finally, as you are all aware by now, the fifth action area of the UNESCO OER recommendation is related to fostering international cooperation or collaboration strategies in the context of OER open education. So in this context, I'm pleased to report that we had over 500 participants registered from 54 different countries for our conference. Throughout the week, close to 2,000 participants from more than 80 different countries engaged on the OEG Connect conference platform area. So in this context, the conference succeeded in bringing together a truly diverse group of practitioners, researchers, advocates, policymakers, and administrators to connect, to share, and to collaborate. The conference week was marked with robust and zestful discussions and interactions in different sessions, and also on the OEG Connect platform area. Thank you all, all of you, for being such a lively, generous, supportive, caring, and engaging participants. Thank you all. And a round of applause to all of you. <laughs> Thanks, Igor. That's a nice all summary. And that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, really great to see and hear some of the range of countries and the range of types of people and also the diversity of languages and and uh, yeah, I think awesome work, everyone. Thank you, uh, thank you to our to all of those that have been involved. Um, as Igor mentioned, um, one of the ways we've designed this year's conference is to feed into next year's conference, and so the theme of the UNESCO OER recommendation will be sustained from this year's event right through to next year's event, and. Next year's event is in May, so there's a bit of a gap of time between these two um, uh, opportunities to engage the global open education community. And so we thought it'd be really fruitful to kind of try to sustain some of the momentum that's been built up around raising awareness of the OER recommendation and supporting its implementation by designing some bridging activities that would take place in the ensuing months between, uh, between today and the next uh, in-person Congress in Nantes. Uh, next May. So we have a number of bridging activities that we've already come up with and we thought we would just share with you some of what they're about and so uh, the first one has to do with the uh, Open Education Global Annual Awards for Excellence in Open Education and I'll turn it over to the person who leads that and has been leading it for 10 years, Marcella Morales. Marcella? Thank you Paul. Well, as, as Paul just said, I'm very happy to be here to talk about Open Education Awards for Excellence, which is always an exciting topic to talk about. The Open Education Global is honored to recognize every year the newest recipients of the Open Education Awards for Excellence, as the work of the winners reflect the outstanding achievements of the open education community. It's been a tradition to announce winners during the OE Global Conference, and this year is no exception. However, the 2021 uh, marks the 10th anniversary of the awards and we're planning a thing, uh, things a bit differently. Winners will be revealed progressively and by categories leading to a closing celebration on December 7th. And we are starting today with the announcement of the UNESCO OER Implementation Award. Next, we will announce the Open Assets Awards on October 15th, then the Open Practices Awards plus the Resilience Award on October 30th, following with the individual awards on November 15th and closing with a big 10th anniversary celebration on December 7th. The 10 year anniversary of the awards is a big milestone, not only for the awards and for the Open Education Global, but also for the community. It's been 10 amazing years of rising with excellence 10 years of growing, learning, sharing, and collaborating with this wonderful open education community. And we think it's time to celebrate and honor these first 10 years of the awards. 
It's been an honor to witness the evolution of the awards starting in 2011 on the 10th year celebration of Open Courseware, where we only had three categories, individual, sites, and courseware. We speed up to today where we have 16 categories that include individual achievements, resources of all kinds. We have open coursework, courses, open courses of all kinds, MOOCs, open textbooks, open repositories. And this year, we even have the introduction of our newest category, which is open infrastructure, which recognizes technologies and tools that enable openness. And we even have an entire additional group of categories with open practices that include open pedagogy, open research, open policy, and open collaboration. So the awards now celebrate not only what we share, but also how we share the open assets created by the community. As of this year, 198 awards have been granted in 31 countries. So on this special occasion with the 10th year anniversary of the awards, we want to acknowledge the collective impact of our community. And to start the celebration and in line with this year's conference theme, the first award to be announced is the UNESCO OER Implementation Award, a category introduced in 2020 in support of the UNESCO OER recommendation. The Open Education Global is honored to present this first community Open Education Award for excellence. The winner of the 2021 UNESCO OER Implementation Award is every one of the 294 presenters at the OE Global 2021 online conference for their outstanding leadership in advancing the UNESCO OER recommendation in their own practices. A big, big congratulations to you all. Today, you will notice, yes, it, it, it's a round of applause for every presenter that we have in the conference. Thank you, thank you very much for all your contributions. Today, you will notice that uh, your presented badge on OEG Connect has changed to show your award-winning status. This award badge that you many of you probably already see uh, saw, uh, this award badge is not only for displaying on OEG Connect, you are free to use it on your personal and or institution website, emails or social media. We hope that you proudly display it on all your electronic spaces, so please feel free to use it. You may find the downloadable materials in the award website, awards.oeglobal.org, and you may also review the list of all the winners that share this wonderful recognition with you. Uh, we invite you to stay updated with the latest information about the separate announcement of the rest of the winners. This information will be available on the same website and also shared through our newest and social media channels. We hope you will join us on the celebration from now to December. And once again, a huge congratulations to you all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank it you claps so much, for everyone. Marcella. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's Marcella said, this is like the first time we've given out an award to an entire community. And, and it feels like a really milestone moment when we're acknowledging that these kinds of efforts are often not the efforts of just one person, but an entire community. And how awesome to give an award to such a diverse and globally inclusive community. Um, so I really love this award. And I also love all these badges that are happening. It's, it's really fun. great to see people uh, interested in them. Um, the, so there is one of the bridging activities, the progressive announcement of more open education awards will unfold over the next few months leading to this uh, culminating celebration of the 10th anniversary of the awards on the 7th of December. Um, and we'll have more special announcements at that event um, that we're working on behind the scenes. <laughs> and uh, another really uh, fascinating uh, bridging activity is uh, the brainchild of Alan Levine on our team. And this has to do with um, engaging the global open education community in annotating the actual UNESCO OER recommendation. And I'll turn it over now to Alan to, to share more about what that activity is all about. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so uh, yes, in, in this year of developing this and knowing or, or hoping that we would see as much um, examples, discussion, um, really intense conversations that we saw in the conference space, 
of um, thinking about how we could like uh, anchor this as specific examples or uh, places to discuss uh, the recommendation itself, which of course is a very written in high level general language. And so um, we are hoping as part of this idea about taking all this uh, activity from the conference and outside and using annotation tools to actually connect it to specific parts of uh, the recommendation. And so uh, we looked briefly at uh, the versions uh, doing it on the UNESCO site um, because they're there in the six languages. Uh, it's actually, a, I won't get too much into the technology, but it's a, it's a long single PDF document and also the hypothesis annotation tool. You have to install something on your browser and um, witnessing um, some other open pedagogy practices um, made me think about doing this in press books um, because there we can set it up so this is just available to you when you go to the press book. So um, I'm gonna reveal now, um, and again, this is a very early draft. We've actually just been working on this and we really appreciate the support of uh, Hugh McGuire and everybody at press books for um, giving us a place to host this. Um, and so this is going to be a book itself, um, which has parts to be added, but the part that what we wanted to get there um, was transferring the recommendation from those PDF documents um, into press books. And I'm gonna give a brief live demo and, and risk everything uh, not working um, because um, that's just while Ellen's getting going, I'll just say getting the actual uh, recommendation text in all of those languages over into a press book turned out to be um, a challenging task. And I will, um, I, I will apologize now. I sat through the, um, the Arabic webinar and uh, understood um, as much as I could. Um, uh, we had some challenges with the format of the PDF version. So we're still working on this and we may reach out to some of our colleagues who can help us because we wanna make sure we get the Arabic version in there. So um, right now um, there's not a tremendous amount in here but I just wanna show you that we've got the, the six languages um, that are gonna be represented with, um, with the recommendation in there. So um, just to give a brief demo of what I, I mean is that um, when I go um, to any one of those versions in the top right of the screen, you'll see this little um, symbol for this button. And, that, and for those familiar with Hypothesis, it's an open source um, tool that sort of adds this layer of annotation atop of any public web content. So you can scribble in the notes of the margins of anything that's on the web, um, but unlike your books and papers where you do this individually, we can do this collectively. So if I see this annotation symbol, I know that something is there. Hypothesis is activated. I even see that there's something uh, yellow, there's a highlight. And so when I open this, um, I'm already logged in uh, to Hypothesis, but if not, you can actually log in uh, right here or even create your account. Um, so if you aren't familiar with Hypothesis, um, uh, Nate Angel from Hypothesis has been hanging around uh, the site. You can contact us and we can help you get started, but. Um, it's pretty easy and um, I'm pretty sure many people here are uh, familiar with this. So um, this very first um, note, so if I was just reading this, um, there's just a couple notes that have been added uh, by our colleagues that we've been preparing this. But um, if I'm interested in something, um, now this is not much of an annotation, this is more of a welcome, um, something that I wrote to greet people, but you can reply. So again, this is conversational here. So. Um, we can have conversations within these note margins, um, as well as what we're hoping for is that um, specific examples that people can offer um, uh, that explain, highlight, we can ask questions here, and we can really flesh out what this means and what it's going to take uh, to implement these. So um, as, as a brief example, um, we have many things at the conference, and so, um, are you seeing this uh, presentation on the Spark, um, the libraries at work? Mm -hmm. Okay, just so, so fascinating uh, presentation that we saw here. I could actually annotate with this as a specific example, but when I look through the slides and followed some links, um, there's the great um, European network of open librarians. And so I, I may copy that link and I would say, um, as I'm reading this, I might say, um, oh, I see libraries pop up here. So when you're annotating, you think about phrases or words that seem to pop out of you as something that you could say, 
oh, I know something here that, that I could contribute or that would be an example of this. So I'm gonna highlight libraries and I'm gonna put this annotation here and then I would start composing. I'm not gonna do it in a live demo, but um, I can include um, a link and a discussion about why I think um, the Spark librarian effort is a really good example of showing the engagement of the library community in the OER recommendation. So what we're looking for people to do is to pick their preferred language to do annotation in and um, find specific parts that they can either speak to from their own work, um, offer examples, or pull from all this wonderful activity that we've had at the conference and to sort of um, bring this in as sort of like some raw material that we can use between now and when we meet in Nantes in May to sort of carry on this work. And so this is a way to anchor all this activity that we've had at the conference and beyond within the context of the recommendation itself. And so um, I, I'm just, to me, like I, web annotation is like one of the best things that is available on the web for us to use to be um, collectively sharing knowledge and engaging in ongoing activity. And so we're inviting everybody here and everybody beyond to start participating and annotate with us. Yeah, thanks so much, Alan. I, I think this is really a really fascinating opportunity because I know that you know the recommendation was was really unanimously adopted and accepted by all 193 member states of UNESCO. So that signifies kind of a high level uh, governmental support for what the recommendation is calling for, and what it feels to me. This conference, in a way, is about bridging that kind of high level decision maker level with the people doing the groundwork right on the ground. And in many ways, if we can annotate the recommendation with examples of actual practice and with, with uh, recommendations in terms of resources and even analytical kind of criti critical thinking, I think all of those annotations will help decision makers move their initiatives forward in an effective way. So this is a really exciting. I look forward to doing this collectively. I think it's gonna be really fun. Thanks so much, Alan, for working on this. I know it's been a big undertaking, um, but I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, the third um, bridging activity that we wanted to uh, just highlight, it's, it's uh, actually here, I'll put it into chat. Oops. <clears throat> um, sorry, just a second, here we go. Is uh, with regard to the explainer videos. And so um, in, uh, in the bridging activity area of the OEG Connect space, we talked about three bridging activities, the awards, the annotation work that Alan's just described, but also the uh, uh, explainer videos. And we linked to a wonderful example that Paola Corti had submitted with, uh, which she developed with other colleagues that ex provided an explanation in multiple languages about the uh, first action area of the UNESCO OER recommendation, which has to do with capacity building. And we really loved this model of having multiple voices talk about the what that action area is all about and its importance and hearing diverse views in different languages that presents that action area and its importance to the global open education audience. And rather this, than just invite individuals to create uh, additional videos, what we thought we would do is just kind of put an open invitation out to the global open education community to, to uh, participate in creating these explainer videos. And so if you would like to share your views on why any of the other four action areas are important and what their meaning is for you and your work, then we invite you to express interest in that and we'll coordinate the creation of explainer videos for all the other four action areas um, uh, of policy, inclusive and equitable access, sustainability and international cooperation. So uh, this is really a chance for the community to provide an orientation and, and an explanation of what those action areas in the UNESCO OER recommendation are all about and why they're important. Um, so that's the third bridging activity. Um, and I think what we'll do now is um, just turn it over to Colin and Melanie to share with us 
some of what to expect and some of the plans that are underway for next year's OE Global 22, 2022 conference, which is being planned as an in-person event in Nantes, France. And we really hope that the, uh, that the travel uh, opportunities and the pandemic has settled down enough for the global open education community to attend and finally meet up with each other again face-to-face -face and have a fantastic event together. But Colin and Melanie, please, uh, over to you to share some of what's, what's being planned. Ooh, Colin's got slides. Hopefully you can see the slides. Yep. And uh, so, uh, Igor, don't worry. We've only got 67 of them. <laughs> so we will, be, we will keep it very short. So this will be a joint effort by, with Milani and I, trying to give us some good reasons to attend NON 2022. So I have to say the truth. I mean, I did a similar presentation one year ago, trying to convince people to come to NON 2021 but it was completely different because then it was you know that was the only thing we had to do here we sort of cook this presentation Milani and I um, as a way to sort of just enjoy the moment so there's a lot of very serious reasons to come I we try to mix the serious reasons and the less serious reasons anyhow this is in between Milani and I so let's move on how do I do this good perfect Melanie. Hello, everyone. So yeah, one of the first reasons you definitely have to come to Nantes in May is the fact that we have some really good restaurants and bar which are quite representative of the French gastronomy. <laughs> and I think it's a good point, actually, for us. Yes, that alone. <laughs> so. I'm having some real trouble with my whatever. So the second reason is that we've enjoyed the NOT 2021, which wasn't in NOT, but we enjoyed it a lot. So many things have started, conversations, you've heard about projects which were emerging, you've heard about some initiatives, and you're surely wanting to know what's going to happen to these initiatives. So if you want to know what's going to happen to all these initiatives, you have to come to NOT in 2022. Milan. The third reason is the fact that there is actually a lot of to visit. Uh, French, uh, France, sorry, is very known for uh, our castle. Um, the most famous in here is called Chateau d'Anne de Bretagne. And the city is also located by the river named La Loire, which is quite beautiful at night. So another reason is that I think in a lot of webinars we have or discussions, we have noticed that the open education movement is actually on a, on a high. So it's not as if we're in a defensive position. I think that we are being solicited from all sides to actually do more and more. So this means that we need more and more activities and we need the Congress and the conference to be stronger and stronger. So this is a very good reason to come to NART next year. Nantes is also very known as an eco destination. This is actually the only French city designated as a new European green capital. So you definitely have a lot of natural areas, for example, and the same as in Amsterdam. I don't know if you've already been there, but there are actually a lot of bicycles. So there are some challenges. There's some strong challenges. Uh, I think one of them is that this conference has been a success and that makes the next one very challenging. But it also has been a success because it's been online, allowing, as um, Igor said earlier, 500 participants. So I'm pretty sure we won't reach 500, even if I do hope the borders will be open and people will be able to travel. But there are also some issues that we were able to solve thanks to the uh, fact of being on the internet. And one of them, which is dear to my heart, which is multilingualism, we're going to still have to find ways now to deal with multilingualism because people are expecting us to deal with it. So it is going to be a challenge. And again, as I said before, we need help for this. And again, as uh, Paul just said, uh, it's all about mixing um, approaches which are bottom up and top down. 
So this also has been a very nice equilibrium of this conference. We need to continue this again with the help of all. It is going to be one of the challenges for not in 2022. Of course, you definitely have to come in France to meet the French people. And maybe if you are lucky enough to meet some nice people, because we are not actually all arrogant, but quite nice. Okay, just to say at this point, I suggested to Melanie that we should give uh, people a chance to follow a MOOC on humility, right? Because to come to France, you need to come with a bit of humility. No, oh, it is a joke. Right, the second, the last, and the next, or not quite next, we've got 10 reasons, so we've got three left. Support by UNESCO continues. So UNESCO has given us a patronage for both editions, and hopefully the collaboration will continue. But this again makes it even more relevant what we're doing, because from here we will pass our findings, we will pass uh, our, uh, our elements to the UNESCO, and that is a really nice way into the sort of governmental uh, institutions and things of that sort. One important point is th also that the same team sorry, is waiting for you. It was quite a challenge, but we are really pleased to have met some of you online and looking forward to see all of you uh, in face to face in Nantes in May next year. And what is the 10th? What is very France? The oysters. So, oh, I'm sorry, we did have this slide before. Well, just a joke, but to say that, yes, you will be well received when you come to Nantes in a few months' time. And um, making, we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much. Voila. You call it. You want to stop screen sharing and we'll come back. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, well, so there you go. Uh, some uh, remarks about this year's conference, some bridging activities, and some really compelling reasons. I'm definitely up for oysters and wine, to, <laughs> but also to engage with all of you in person in Nantes next May. Um, we, we wanted to take a few moments uh, to just open the floor. Um, as Colin was remarking earlier before we got underway, it, it can be challenging when we're doing a conference like this online where all of us are busy working behind the scenes to make it successful to really hear people's feedback on how it went, what was your experience, what did you like, what are your suggestions for improvements. And so um, I just wanted to take a few moments now to open the floor for any of you who might want to express through text chat or through the use of your microphone some feedback for those of us that are the planners and organizers. We more than welcome it. Don't be shy. I mean, I, I'll kick it off if you want, Paul. Sure, um, thank you. I arrived late and I admit that I didn't really get a chance to participate in this conference as much as I might due to all, you know, all the busyness in the world. Uh, but I'll just have to say that the reinvention that you guys have done about what it might look like to have a virtual conference, I think is extraordinary. I mean, I think for many reasons, uh, COVID aside, but climate change being another one, I think we, we do need to reimagine how we gather together. I, of course, would love something better than to go to Nantes as well and have oysters with y'all um, and wine. But um, barring that, you know, I think to finding ways to do virtual collaboration together is absolutely key. And you guys are, are really exploring like great new ways to make that happen. So I really applaud you for that. And I know there were a lot of people working behind the scenes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have definitely been trying to innovate there and experiment a little hmm. bit. So, Eva, did you want to say yes. something? I can continue on the more or less on the same line. I have been both the presenters and um, chair uh, during the conference and it has been a um, great pleasure and honor and um, I think um, uh, this conference uh, online conference has been such a, such an innovative as was mentioned before with all the languages that is uh, impressive because it is easier for most of us to um, uh, talk in our own language 
Um, so that is one, one reason. And also the, the connect was just great. First, I thought it was a bit overwhelming when I was trying to get into it. I was thinking, oh my God, <laughs> how can I manage? I said that to, to Alan before, but then all of the, the second time I went there, it was so structured and it was so easy. And it was so, um, yes, it was really easy going. So that was a real success. Uh, um, and of course, I appreciated that you awarded all of us with a, a badge for our contribution. That was a great uh, uh, jest from you. Uh, but also, be beside all the professional um, uh, speeches and the professional structure and infrastructure and all these kind of things, I have felt during the week, I have really tried to take part in most of the sessions. I have felt such a um, uh, nice atmosphere as well. And like a like a like large family and fr so friendly and there was also actually one in person in my first session which I shared, and she was a bit early and we Alan and we were there, and um, we were there half an hour before and she came rather in the beginning as well and and then we started you know to talk and then people were coming in etc cetera, etc cetera, and we and she said oh next time I will go to a conference I will really be very early because it's such a nice atmosphere <laughs> and i think that's very good um, uh, good expression because um a conference is a conference but the atmosphere and the culture and the people make the conference so uh, yeah congratulations thank you Eva. that's very nice of you to say all those things really i want to echo what Eva yeah. just said because i that's one of the things i've really noticed this week is there's there's been <clears throat> this lovely warmth that has been sort of permeating uh, the conference and the sessions and in uh, a lot of conversation. I noticed this actually too at um, the OERX domains to this year where there was, um, you know, a lot more, um, you know, there's, there seems to be more focus on, on layers of empathy and things, which, uh, which I think is, is beautiful and lovely. And uh, I thank everybody who's sort of creating leadership in those areas. Thank you, Erica. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I agree with everything everyone said so far. Um, and just, you know, having organized just one conference before, it takes a lot of work in, to create the structures and spaces within that, you know, where those kinds of conversations and that, you know, even intimate conversations, you know, can happen. So, you know, I really did feel that there were the sessions that I was at, you know, there was a lovely sense of everybody just um, relating to one another and sharing. Um, and that was down to, as I said, the space and the structures that you all created and also the chairing, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I really want to thank all the chairs, uh, certainly all the sessions I was in, because that's just kind of a, a little bit of magic that has to be there as well, you know, where people kind of can are ready to facilitate that kind of discussion. So, so yeah, uh, thanks to everybody and um, looking forward to next time. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Anyone else? There are some questions in the chat as well, Paul. Perhaps something for our hosts. Um, so that there are already some questions about how about the structure of the in-person congress, whether there is going to be a new call for for proposals for the in-person congress. And there is also another question from Gino, who is asking whether it's going to be possible to actually pay registration fees already this year because of budget considerations. So I'm not sure who wants to address this question. <laughs> you get to address the second one. <laughs> so the second one is uh, clear. The answer is going to be yes. So we, we'll, I mean, obviously we didn't want to confuse this edition with the next edition. So we're handing everything at the same time. Sounded like a bad idea. But we do. We have understood that people do want to spend some money now. So you know, spend some money now. So we we will come up with something as soon as we have our next meeting. And for the yeah. first one, I really think that this is going to need some more thinking, right? Because, 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 because things have happened in this edition. And uh, I, I think there's enough novelties and things for us to consider exactly what is going to be the format of the North thing. We do know we've got some wonderful rooms. We've got lots of room to do all sorts of things. It will be physical. So people will be there. We'll be able to interact. 
uh, Melanie didn't say so, or perhaps she did, and I wasn't uh, quite aware. But I mean, we are already booking venues to how you actually so you do eat well, have nice food, but also see nice places. There is, uh, I mean, all that is going to exist in not. There's going to be options, opportunities to interact, and we're trying to keep the prices as low as possible, obviously. But we still have to make that decision of um, how we um, what we put in the conference. But, but there definitely will be a call, um, just yes. to clarify that. So uh, we, we already have done some initial planning because initially the idea was this in-person event would happen like next week, um, immediately following the online conference. So, so there's some planning that took place already about what might be appropriate for a, an in-person program. Um, and yes, for sure, there will be a, a new call for proposals associated with that program that comes out and uh, we hope many of you uh, respond to that and are are there next year. Awesome. Was there any other question, Igor, that we missed? Um, I don't think specifically questions. There, was, there have been lots of complimentary remarks from different people. So that has been really lovely to see. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> all right. Um, well, look, I, I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, start to bring this session to a close, but I want to invite um, my talent co-host partner Judith Zavesta to to uh, to provide a closing for us here at the end of this particular session. Over to you, Judith. Thank you, Paul. I just happen to have my guitar. <laughs> I just wrote these lyrics about fifteen minutes ago. Everyone, so bear with me. <laughs> Goodbye to the OE Global Conference 2021. It's been a great conference and a lot of fun. I hope to see you in France. Guess we're going to have to wear some pants. So raise your hands and clap for the OE Global Conference 2021. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judith. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you. And thank you all. There's still some sessions, of course, happening today, but we wanted to provide some summary for the for the event before it gets too late for colleagues over in other parts of the world. Um, but a lovely close, Judith. Uh, thank you a lot. That was really great. And uh, and um, We'll, we'll close the session out now. Alan, I think you can stop the recording and we'll let people go and hopefully participate in some of the remaining sessions that are taking place today.